Hello, say chat up. Did you know your brain has about 86 billion neurons? Well, that's more than the stars in our galaxy. Think of your brain as a powerful app. If you use it well, you will achieve great results. But if you use it poorly, uh, you will struggle. Just like an app, your brain comes with a variety of settings. And the final result you get in your life depends on how you use it and what commands or requests you send to it. And you have the power to adjust these settings according to your needs, to optimize your performance and, of course, the outcomes of your choices, of your actions. This is very important to be aware of because, you see, life has ups and downs. And when things go wrong, and eventually they will, what do most people do? They complain. But complaining is like running your app on the worst possible settings. It feels easy, but it doesn't really solve anything. It's just wasting your time and your energy. So here's a better way for you to use your brain app. First of all, you need to find the button to pause this complaining mode. When you feel like your mind is constantly complaining, we are in this, uh, what we call, a complaining mode. Just like, you know, you can change your phone, your settings to airplane mode, and then you stop receiving calls. Or you can use dark mode to change the screen colors. Let's say there is this complaining mode in which your focus is on what's wrong rather than looking for solutions. And to shift out of this mode, you have to pause and ask yourself, okay, what do I really want? Maybe you want to fix a problem. Or maybe you just list, uh, want somebody to listen to you. These are two different needs, and you have to address them accordingly. So this is the first lesson for today. You have to understand what you want, what you need. Let me explain this in more detail. Idea number one is when fixing the problem is the priority. Because there are situations in which your main focus is just solving the issue at hand. For example, if you're facing a technical problem at work because a machine broke down and you need to use it urgently, well, in this case, the priority is finding a solution quickly. In these moments, you don't want somebody to be listening to your feelings. How are you doing? No, you need that machine fixed as soon as possible, or you need an alternative solution. So the goal here is to resolve the situation efficiently so you can move forward. In these cases, it can be effective to search for tutorials online, or you can ask for help from colleagues you trust, or maybe you can use money and pay professional service providers who will fix the problem. But there's also the situation number two, when being heard is more important. There are times where the situation may not have a quick fix, or the immediate solution is not clear, or is not viable. For instance, somebody was rude to you, or you experienced an emotionally charging and challenging event. So what you need most here is to feel supported, feel listened to, feel that people understand you. And in these situations, unsolicited advice or a lecture, here are five steps for you to take to you know, make things different, that's going to be patronizing, it's going to make you feel worse. You don't want solutions at this moment. Instead, you just need a compassionate listener who can empathize with your feelings without jumping into this problem-solving mode. The value here is feeling validated, understood, and that can be by itself incredibly healing and help you process the emotions involved here in this situation. By distinguishing between these two needs, you can better address your underlying concerns, you can choose the appropriate course of action. This self-awareness will help you to communicate more effectively and also get the support you need, whether it is in form of a practical solution or some type of a emotional validation. Now, let me share you, uh, with you here an easy trick to change how your brain app works. There is a special type of a question to change how you think. And you can use this question structure at any moment when you catch yourself in this complaining mode, when you're complaining too much. You can use what if questions to change your focus of attention. When you complain, you fixate it on what is. And this causes you to get stuck because you're only seeing the current situation with all its problems, with all its limitations. Complaining will keep you focused on the negative aspects. It will be reinforcing a sense of helplessness, of frustration. 
But when you use what if questions, now you're engaging your brain's ability to visualize and imagine what it can become. And this shift in focus will allow you to move beyond the current situation and explore new possibilities and solutions. You see, your brain loves questions because they are like inputs, they're commands, requests for your mental app. So when you ask what if questions, you engage your brain's natural curiosity and creativity. And these questions prompt you to think beyond the immediate problem and consider alternative scenarios or outcomes. And this is crucial for project management and problem solving because it helps you to envision potential solutions and strategies. Do you understand that? So, Okay, to make it easier for you to use, to apply this in your daily life, I'm going to share a few examples, practical examples of uh, what-if questions. You can ask, what if this problem has something important to teach me? Instead of being fixated on the problem, on the issue, this question will help you to look for lessons or growth opportunities. It will shift your focus from frustration to learning, making you more adaptable, more resilient. You can also ask, what if there is a hidden opportunity here? This question will encourage you to see beyond the problem, to search for potential benefits or advantages which you might have overlooked. It will help you to adopt a proactive mindset, turning challenges into stepping stones. You can also use, what if I already had everything I needed to solve this? By imagining that you already have all the resources and the skills you need, this question will boost your confidence and also your creativity because it will encourage you to think about what are the next steps. And oftentimes this is the type of a clarity that this is exactly what you need. These questions will unlock new ideas in your mind by shifting your focus from the current limitations to potential solutions. They help you to break free from this complaining mode and all that cycle of negativity and powerlessness. By regularly using what-if questions, you train your brain to look for solutions rather than just dwelling on problems. And this is exactly what we do in planning your life at arata.se forward slash planning your life. Because in planning your life, you have a whole set of questions in our interactive activities that are designed to make your brain think actively to build the life you want. The reticular activating system, RAS, works like a filter in the search uh, settings of your brain app. You must understand this and, of course, do the right configurations. Your brain has this cool part called Reticular Activating System, RAS. You can think of it like a bouncer in a club. It decides what information gets your attention, gets in, and what gets ignored. Here's how it works. Your RAS will scan everything around you and will pick out what it believes, what it thinks is important. This is what lets important stuff go into your conscious mind and it ignores the rest. Now, the amazing part here is that you can train your RAS. When you focus on solutions and possibilities, your RAS starts looking for more good stuff, like letting this bouncer get the fun people in and keep away all the troublemakers. When you direct your attention to something specific, your RAS adjusts to highlight that particular type of information. For example, when couples decide to have a baby, suddenly they report they notice babies everywhere. It's like, oh, everybody's having babies. Well, the world is not actually getting more babies. It's just that their RAS is directed to baby-related information. This happens to everything that you're focusing. When you're buying a car, for example, do you understand that? Let me share a few uh, other practical examples of the RAS in action. If you want to start a business, then you start to pay more attention. You notice more business opportunities. You notice more networking events. If you want to get fit, well, you start to spot more people doing workouts. You see more gym advertisements. You see more healthy food options. By consciously choosing to focus on the positive outcomes and the opportunities, you can train your RAS to filter in the information that supports your goals, your aspirations. And this makes it easier to notice and act on opportunities that might otherwise have overlooked. This is the principle that we use in the interactive activities at arata.se forward slash planning your life.
Let's continue and combine these ideas now. So, when you have a problem, don't complain. You can do uh, what if questions instead. And these questions will be training your RAS, and this RAS will look for good things, for solutions. And the result is that you start to see opportunities everywhere. Your brain believes what you tell it. You have to feed it with good thoughts, with good questions. It's like planting seeds for success in your mind. You have an amazing brain app. So please make sure to use these techniques, make them work for you. Think of a current problem you have. Now, ask a what-if question. See how it changes your perspective. You can do this every day for a week. And in the beginning, it might feel a little bit weird, but that's okay. It's like learning any new skill. Just keep practicing and soon it will become natural. You're going to be amazed at how much better life can be when you focus on possibilities rather than problems. So, let's get this done together with a structured, step-by-step -step method at planningyourlife at arata.se forward slash planningyourlife.